Good morning. Well, we turn back again now to the letter to the Romans. This time we come to chapter 4. In chapter 4, Paul is speaking to the Jewish people that are reading the letter. And he's telling them something very simple, which perhaps they hadn't seen before. And perhaps which we don't see quite clearly either. And he goes all the way back to their ancestor Abram or Abraham. Exalted father or father of a multitude. In his relationship with God, God changed his name from Abram to Abraham. And he says to him, by this act, I am prophesying over your future, that you will truly become the father of a multitude of nations. Because in truth, Abraham is our spiritual father as well. Why? Because he came to understand God and accepted God by faith. Not by works, by faith. When God has spoken to him when he was living in Ur the Chaldees, he hadn't responded fully, first of all. He had travelled with his father Terah and he'd gone up and then travelled later after his father's death down into Canaan. But Abram heard the word of God and believed him believed that this is what God was asking of him, and set out, crossing the Euphrates, he came down into Canaan, where in fact he was living in a tent, where in fact, at the end of his life, he had nothing in fact to show for it as far as land was concerned. He just had one small cave in which he'd buried Sarah, and which one day he would be buried as well. But for the rest of it, all he ever saw, in fact, was this one son being born, this Isaac. And this was the promise of God to him. But he believed God, and he believed God by faith. He trusted. He trusted him. Now, as we ourselves look at our lives, and this is what Paul is trying to show to the Jews, he said, Abraham was not justified by what he did, but by his faith. And in the same way at this moment, Jews and Gentiles are going to come to eternal life by faith, by believing in God and that God cannot be denied, that his will will be fulfilled in our lives. We may look at life around us and we may wonder. We may think, have I done anything of value? Have I achieved anything that God has asked me to do? Have I really become the person that God wanted me to be? And the enemy, you know, will sneak up on us and sit on our shoulders and he will say over and over again, to me anyway, he says, Roy, you really failed. You know, you had this wonderful vision before you were ordained that somehow you'd be able to show people what God was like. But you had so many flaws in your own character you had so many difficulties you had to overcome. And over and over and over again you failed. I know in the early hours of the morning, you will show me these failures over and over and over again. And at moments like that, I have to know that I am not justified because I lived a holy life. I'm not justified because I achieved great things. I'm not justified because I accomplished what God asked me to do. I am justified because I believe in Jesus and have accepted him as my Saviour and Lord. And this is what Paul now wants to say to the Christians in Rome. He's saying it to both Jews and Gentiles, but mainly, mainly towards the Jews, because the Jews still had this idea, you see, if only, if only they could keep the law then as Jews, they would have an advantage over the Gentiles. And Paul says, no, that's not the case. All of you, all of you have sinned. All of you have fallen short of God. All of you have failed. Nobody has done right. We all received God's blessing through our faith in Jesus Christ. Now, that doesn't mean to say that having received Jesus as Saviour and Lord and having accepted him in this way, and being born again of the Spirit, that now the Spirit in us 
does not lead us back again into the Old Testament and showing us what God is like and showing us his holiness gives us a desire and a longing to put our lives right with God. We don't, as we said in the last chapter, say, well, in that case, we can do anything we like. In fact, the very opposite is the, is the effect. We're trying all the time to find out what it is that God wants of us and how we should do it and what is our responsibility as Christians. That is why the enemy attacks us, because he knows we have this feeling. And so he tries to take us back again and say, you are a failure. But Abram accepted God by faith. He had nothing to show for it, but he believed in God. He believed that God could not fail. And the same way I believe it for myself, and I want you to believe it for yourselves as well, God cannot fail. His promises will hold. That which he has planned for you will come about. Amen. <laughs>